yesterday in the press. You may have seen it. Um, uh, we're back in the U.S. in February, going to Austin, Texas, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and Boston. So, yeah, it's a very, very busy schedule. And uh, there's obviously still, still a very strong demand um, for people to move to Portugal, in spite of everything that the government is trying to do to stop it. <laughs> it was sick. What, what, what might you be <laughs> referring to there, Bruce? Yeah, Bruce? Well, obviously, we've had the... Um, the situation already with the the changes to the golden visa but that's never really affected anybody who really wants to come and live here the golden visa was for people who wanted to have portuguese residency status and generally not actually live here um what happened last night uh, which is what created a bit of a busy morning for me since uh, um it was about midnight last night i got a message from uh, from a friend um posting something from the portuguese news the prime minister was on tv last night and announced that the non-habitual residence scheme is being scrapped so what's widely known as the nhr scheme um which um, since 2009 nh nhr has given a effective 10-year tax holiday to foreigners moving to portugal um they this was actually changed a few years ago. It used to be 0%, so there was no tax on, on pension income. Um, um, but then they changed that to 10% tax on pension income. And, and there's always been a 20% a tax on income from other um, sources, so professional income drawn from outside of Portugal. But the, the whole idea was that foreigners could come here and for 10 years they could live here and pay a lot less or no tax. Uh, dividend income was, uh, there was no tax on income from dividends, for example. Um, they're scrapping the scheme. Um, I suppose the the only good thing about the announcement last night is that for once there is some clarity in what the Prime Minister has said. So he's made it clear uh, that anybody who has already got MHR status or who secures MHR status by the end of the year will still get their 10 years. Um, that's not what happened when the um, when the end of the golden visa was announced. It was that was mass confusion um, everywhere, and uh, a lot of um, very poor reporting by the Portuguese press. And uh, um, but no, at least there is some clarity. Uh, the way I look at it is, it had to end one day. It's certainly been good for Portugal in some ways. I would agree to some extent. It, uh, it's it's probably the thing that should have been singled out. Uh, before even scrapping the golden visa, because so there, there are a lot of um, foreigners who, Italians, for example, here, here in the Algarve, uh, I don't know how many, but there's certainly at least a thousand uh, Italians who live here during the winter. They come and they rent a effectively an AL property, so a property that was normally rented for holiday lets during the summer. They rent the AL property for over just over six months during the winter, and then they can. Uh, they, they get their Portuguese residency easily as an EU citizen, and then they um, they benefit year round from the from the from from these tax savings without really contributing much to the Portuguese economy. So yeah, that I've never really viewed as being positive. Um, all that's done is pushed up the the um, the, the cost of rents in places um, along the Algarve, Portimao, Lagos, um, Faro, wherever. So. Yeah, I can see why he's done that. Um, it's obviously a shame because Portugal would benef does benefit greatly from attracting wealthy people who actually come here, invest in a nice property, um, put their kids in a in an international school, or uh, or they carry out other investments while they're here. So, yeah, there's a flip side to it, but um, but it had to end eventually. It couldn't go on forever. That's why. Yeah, I well said. Well said. Well said.